Okay, let us have a good look at our debtors recon, everybody. So this is a section that doesn't really come out all that much, but you need to be prepared for it. If it does, it won't be that heavy, but it's very easy marks. So let us get into some theory first. So simply traders sell goods for cash and on credit. You thought I was looking down here. I was actually looking up there, you know, keep them guessing. <laughs> Um, sorry, I'm, I'm so bad at jokes. So simply traders have the telephone numbers of all their debtors. What other information should they obtain before allowing customers to open accounts? State two points with the reason in each case. So anything along these lines would score you the mark. So maybe a proof of income or salary slip. And the reason for something like this would be to set credit limits. Set credit limits so that they don't overdraw. Like, you know, if their salary is like 10,000 rands a month, but they're buying goods for like 20,000 rands, yeah, pr probably we shouldn't grant them credits because we're running the risk of bad debts. Uh, proof of residence. Proof of residence. Uh, why? So we can trace debtors. You know, like Liam Neeson, I will find you. So we can trace these debtors uh, that are not adhering to our credit terms and conditions and maybe to avoid fictitious debtors. So debtors that don't exist, like we haven't vetted their residence. Maybe they lied to us about where they stay. Um, also anything along these lines, like the contact details of friends or family so we can track them, uh, the bank statement, bank balance, an ID to ensure that their personal details are indeed correct. Anything along those lines would have scored you guys the marks. Okay, 2.1.2. Calculate the correct closing balance of the debtor's control account on 31 October 2016 and the correct amounts uh, owing by these debtors. So let's start with 2.1.2, the first bullet point. So we can just draw up a little account here. And this is going to be our debtor's control account. And the balance of the debtor's control account on 31 October 2016 is 179500. So we can plug it in here. Debtor's control account, it increases on the debit side and there's a favorable balance there. So the following errors and omissions must be taken into account. So an invoice for 2,500 Rand issued to W. Smith, Will Smith. Keep my wife's name out. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to continue because then I'll get in trouble with YouTube. Um, was not recorded in the books of Simply Traders. So it wasn't recorded. So we need to record it here. It's 2,500 uh, that W. Smith now owes us. Our debtors control account is increasing here. The total of the debtors allowances journal, so returns by debtors, that's returns by debtors, was posted to the debtors control account as 20,100 instead of 21,000. Um, that's a major error, so we need to reduce it on the credit side here, 900. And if we just run through all these adjustments here, we use, that in the s we use these in the second bullet point. But this one over here, G, the total for discounts allowed in the CRJ was overstated by, by 500, too much. So it increases our debtor's control amount. That's discount allowed in the CRJ. So a small discount that we give to them when they buy goods on credit for us. We overstated it. So we gave them too much of a discount. We need to reduce it. So that's why it increases our debtor's control account. And now if we just total everything, we get 182,500 on the debit side and well on the credit side too. And 182,500 minus 900, this represents our balance carried down amount. That's going to be our balance carried down. Okay, and that is it. Um, look, you could have done this all in one line, but I prefer to draw up accounts. It just makes a bit more sense so you can visually, you can clearly see okay, it's increasing on the debit side or decreasing on the credit side. Well, depending on the account that you're dealing with. Okay, and let us do this question here. So there's J. Ramsey, Will Smith, and C. Prince. Okay, so let us deal with J. Ramsey first. So 37,500, that is the amount in the debtors list. So that's going to be our starting amount. Same with Will Smith, 19,500. And C. Prince, 3,900 for C. Prince. And let us deal with Ramsey first. So an invoice for 4,300 issued to C Prince was posted incorrectly to the account of J Ramsey. So we increased this amount. In J Ramsey's account, we need to decrease it and increase it under C Prince. Okay, so we've dealt with that. Stock for 5,100 was sold to C Prince um, and was treated as a return of goods when posting it to the debtor's ledger account of C Prince. 
So we've got a major issue here. We need to take it out and add it back in again. So it was treated as a return. So we add back the 5,100 and now the net effect is, well, it's zero. We don't want a net effect of zero. We want it to be shown as stock sold. So we add another 5,100. So 5,100 times two, we've dealt with D, let's deal with E, a check for 8,350 originally received from J. Ramsey in settlement of debt 8,500 was returned by the bank, uh, marked RD, and no entries were made in the debtor's ledger. So we couldn't cash in this check, major issue, and J. Ramsey still owes us 8,350. Give us our money, Ramsey. So the check was for 8,350, the settlement of the debt was for 8,500, so we've got a nice GARP principle that we utilize here. It's the principle of prudence. We rather overstate our expenses and understate our income. So that is why we don't utilize 8,500. We utilize 8,350 because it includes the discounted amount. So we just try to keep our accounting as prudent as possible. Now we deal with F, an invoice for 3,600 issued to Will Smith was recorded. Are we just going to keep calling him Will Smith? I think we should. Was recorded correctly in the debtor's journal, but posted as 6,300 to his account in the debtor's ledger. So the difference between these amounts, the 3,600 minus the 6,300, it was recorded correctly in the debtor's journal, but posted as 6,300. So we've overstated it, it's too much. We need to subtract that 2,700 amount. Okay, I've just left a space there because uh, we are still going to deal with another one of Will Smith's entries uh, that we've already dealt with in the debtor's control account. Okay, and this discount allowed in the CRJ doesn't affect our debtors list. This 2,500, we've dealt with it already. We need to add it back to Will Smith's account because it wasn't recorded. And the total of the DAJ was posted to the debtor's control account. So that doesn't affect our debtors lists at all. Um, there is just one more thing I wanted to highlight to you guys. Uh, this 8350 and the 8,500, it's best to list the amounts separately, um, as I previously discussed, but we still need to factor in the 150. So it's still this idea of understating your income, overstating your expenses, things along those lines, but these are two different amounts. That 8350 was the amount that was supposed to be settled. That 150 was the discount. So we use our prudence principle, but we show the amounts separately. So we've also got um, like the concept of materiality here, uh, showing our discount and our payment completely separately. So we add the 150, and if we total everything, for J. Ramsey, we get 41,700. So add and subtract everything here, do the same for Will Smith, we get 19,300, and the same for C. Prince, add and subtract, and we get 18,400. And that's it, it's not that difficult. Now, I know you probably haven't covered this in as much depth in class or even on your own, uh, also, I just want to say that these videos are just a tool. They're meant to supplement your own work. So keep studying, keep doing your own, your own examples. Use this more of a guideline, but not your sole piece of studying because, um, you know, in accounting, they can ask things in so many different ways. So push as many past papers as possible just so you can see the various ways these questions can be examined.